Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo TJ's Path. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes of entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chant, you are up and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Ah, and Jen and Tobias too. I smile politely. Oh, okay. I smile politely, only now realizing how loud our bantering must be in the small diner. Now what in the world are y'all doing back here? Thought we wouldn't see you again after your graduation? Thought we wouldn't see you again after your graduation. I've known Janice as long as I can remember. You haven't always worked in this diner. In fact, she started here when she was about our age. It's like most of the town, though. Once you're comfortable, you don't move much. Chase is filming the town, is filming the town for a school project. We decided to make a little reunion out of it. Well, isn't that nice? I bet Leo's mighty happy. He's been talking nonstop about you three since y'all left. Yeah, he pretty much organized the whole thing. Janice suddenly makes a face. Phew, wee, it's ripe over here. A face burns and I sit harder on my tail, staring at the menu. You know, I think Duke sat here, forgot to spray the scent neutralizer. You know how weasels are. I feel Jenna stiffen up next to me, but thank God she doesn't say anything. Yeah, anyway, how have you been, Janice? Janice leans her hip against TJ's bench, clasping her paws and leaning on an elbow on the, leaning an elbow on the back of it. Oh, can't complain. You haven't missed anything, trust me. Actually, I've been meaning to do a little spring cleaning. Not looking forward to it. My back doesn't bend like it always did. All the small, all the small town small talk niceties and speciesism is starting to make me zone out when TJ suddenly pipes up. We'll help. Janice beams. Well, you know I could never ask that of you, especially while you're on vacation. TJ chuckles. Actually, me Ch and Chase were uh, talking about how we had nothing to do. I think it's a good idea. I can see from Jenna's tight smile that she's feeling exactly the way I am. TJ and his goddamn need to be a good Samaritan. Oh, Tobias, you're an incredibly young man, you know that? <laughs> Just wanting to be of help, ma'am. When can we come over? Ooh, me. Oh, I don't know. How does some, how does sometime tomorrow evening sound when it's nice and cool? Sure. Well, thanks again, Toby. You're really one of a kind. TJ beams up at her, then at me, and frowns as he sees, sees the look on my face. Now, what can I get for you? After Janice takes her order, she bustles off back to the off to the back, leaving me and Jenna to glare at TJ. TJ at first pretends he doesn't notice and starts to adjust the salt and pepper shakers, trying to place them evenly between the menu holders. That was nice seeing her again. We don't say anything. Finally, the tension becomes too much, and he gives us uh, and he gives up on the salt and pepper shakers up to look at up uh, look up at us. What? You know exactly what we didn't come here to clean up Echo's mess. Speaking of which. Jenna reaches past me to grab a towel and starts wiping our table, wrinkling her snout. Disgusting. There's no harm in helping someone. Chase, you told me you didn't know what else we could do. TJ starts to doodle on a napkin with one of the coloring pencils from the pack they leave on the tables. Honestly, Tej, I'd rather hike another trail. Please don't. Please don't. I'm marinating in your otter musk right now. God damn it! Chase! Glaring, I nudge Jenna to slide off the bench so I can get out. When she does, I stomp my way over the single restroom. I sighs and let the heavy door ease shut behind me, pressing on the push-button style lock. The quiet coolness is a welcome relief, even if it is a restroom. I put my palms to my eyes and rub them in circular motions, trying to ease the headache that has been building up since this afternoon. I stand in front of the sink and run my paws under the faucet for a while before bringing some water up to my face. It feels good, but the headache continues to pound. In fact, it feels like it's getting worse. I squint at the mirror, the light suddenly becoming too bright for my eyes. Is that a migraine? Is this a migraine? I've never had one before. Have I? I continue staring at my face, feeling the pressure build. Pretty soon there's a strange sound in my ears, like a tuning orchestra, and I feel like and I feel my heart rate pick up. What the hell? Is this a stroke? Am I having a stroke? Oh god. At that moment, looking at myself in the mirror, my eyes just drop. They move in towards the center of my face. At the same time, the side of my muzzle curves up unbelievably high, giving me a ghastly smile, one that goes up and up, up, goes up and up past the top of my head. Fleetingly, I remember playing with my laptop's camera once, putting on some effects so that my face would distort in ridiculous ways. It looks almost exactly like that. When the earth gives way, falls out from under me, and my paws slip slap the sink as I hold on as I hold on to stop from falling sideways into the wall. The fuck? My voice squeaks as I try to find my footing. I shut my eyes to stop myself from throwing up and slowly the roaring dies down and I feel myself regain my balance. I crack my eyes open and I see my 
and I see my face is back to normal. The light at a terrible level again. I open my eyes the rest of the way and stare at myself, my reflection staring wide-eyed well, wide eyed back. I'm breathing hard, my chest heaving, pupils dilated. Looking down at my knuckles, I see the skin is white through the fur. I slowly let go of the sink and look at my shaking paws. What the hell? My muzzle is dry and I swallow a few times. I take a drink, but I don't trust the dirty faucet. After a few moments, I'm able to calm down, realizing that I'm probably not dying. In fact, my head feels pretty clear at the moment. I'm pretty sure it was a migraine. Migraines can do, can do that to people, right? I draw in a shaky breath again before grabbing a few paper towels from the dispenser. I run them lightly under the water, adding a few pumps of foamy soap as well. Mom has migraines all the time. I'll call her about it tomorrow. I'm able to keep my paws steady now. I run the soaped up towel under my, under my arms a few times. After a quick look to make sure the door is locked, I undo my belt and push down my pants and boxers are arched around my thighs. If I really want to take care of the musk smell, I'm going to have to go down under. I run a few more paper towels under the faucet and soap dispenser. Just as I'm sliding the towel against my tail base, I hear a knock on the I hear a knock in the lever style le, lever in the lever style handle rattle. I jump and look back, not really worried since I know it's locked. Because this place is a fucking piece of shit, I'm just in time to see the button lock lock pop out. The handle swings down and the door swings open enough for a lynx's head to poke through. There I am, pants down a paper towel under my tail, looking like I'm wiping my ass while I moon my Christian best friend. I think we stay like that for at least ten seconds before TJ blinks first. Oh my gosh, sorry! He squeaks it out so fast I barely hear it before the he yanks his head <laughs> before he yanks his head out and the door closes with a snap. Fuck fucking fuck 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 I snarl between my teeth as I scrub myself and throw the towel away the towel. I feel like I'm gonna cry. It's like the entire universe is conspiring against me right now. I sigh and wash my hands, realizing that the longer I de delay going out there, the stupor I'm gonna look. When I come back out, I see TJ stand up immediately, eyes straight ahead as we walk past each other before he heads into the bathroom. Jenna stands up to look back in the booth. To look back, Jenna stands up to let me back into the booth. Everything all right? Yep. As we sit back down, Jenna sips from her glass of water, then starts sucking on an ice cube. So I know TJ had fun, but did you? I drum my fingers on the table, still feeling a bit numb from embarrassment. Yeah, it was fine. About as miserable as I thought it would be, so no surprises. Honestly, I actually kind of wished I'd gone with you two. Oh yeah? I didn't remember that AC is a thing, so I didn't feel that way anymore. At least you're built for that kind of weather. True, doesn't mean I have to like it. So, what'd you do? Sit around all day? I studied for a while, then Flynn and Leo came by, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, they wanted to have lunch with us. Leo was pretty disappointed when he found out you weren't there. Hmm. They brought a bunch of presents for Carl and ha had me choose which one I wanted to give him. How thoughtful. Jenna shrugs. Sorry, guys, I've got, like, a thing of sore throat today. Anyway, Flynn was pretty quiet. She doesn't say anything more, so I press her. Oh? Yeah, just kind of subdued. I guess he might be feeling sorry. I don't know. Well, here's hoping he comes around. Anyway, they're planning a surprise birthday party for Carl. Isn't that not for a few weeks? Yeah, but we want to, we want to have it while we're all here. Yuna drags a drop of condensation around the outside of her glass for a moment. It's between you and me. Don't tell TJ this because I told him I wouldn't tell you, but he said he was really glad to have you along. He says you're what he misses most about this town. Really? That kind of surprises me. We're really good friends, but to say I was what say I was what he missed the most? I look outside. Again, the sky is painted red, orange, and what looks like almost purple. He drew this so I he drew this so I could see what happened when he pranked you to make up for not recording it. I look back down at the table as Jenna slides over the nap slides the napkin over that TJ had been doodling on. A stick figure with a thick tail, I assume me, is lying on the ground. His mouth bigger than his face as he screams. Next to him is a giant spider. Sitting over them both is a stick figure with a big, with big tufted ears. I assume TJ, with its stick arms put up over its face, clearly feeling guilty. <laughs> cute. Isn't it, though? Despite my sarcasm, I really do think it's cute, especially the TJ figure. Shit. What? I forgot my purse. She stands up. I'll be right back. Huh? Why? I'll pay for you. Don't worry about it. The motel's like five minutes away. You can pay me back. But she's already out the door. I sigh, watching her make her way down the road to the window. That's when TJ slides back onto onto his bench. I quickly look down, feeling my cheeks burn all over again. Sorry about that. I just wanted to wash up too. I don't know why, considering TJ looks kempt no matter how no matter what he does. I force myself to look up. Uh, funny drawing. He looks at the napkin and gives a little laugh. Oh, <laughs> she showed that to you. Wait, where'd she go? Forgot her purse. Oh. We sit in unbearably awkward silence for a while before I finally sigh and lean my face against 
lean my face against the paws. I stare hard out the window. Okay, so I wasn't wiping my ass. You know otters have glands. Chase. I look over at TJ and he's smiling. I know, I shouldn't have opened the door. You were just taking a while and we were wondering if you were alright. I look up as I see Janice making her way over, her food on a giant tray. I guess it's really I guess it's really the lock's fault. Oh, having problems with the restroom door? Make sure it's jammed shut real tight. Should lock then. Thanks. As the plates are set down, I'm faintly surprised at the portion size. It's not used to getting this much in the city. Janice immediately bustles off to another customer. And you know I look up from my giant sandwich and fries, grabbing the ketchup bottle. It was kind of cute. TJ immediately looks down, pretending to read the menu even though we've already ordered our food. I feel like my brows are almost going to shoot off my forehead as I stare at him. What does Applewood smoked even mean? Oh no, you're not getting off that easy. Did you just call my butt cute? No! TJ's ears fall flat. I'm, I'm kind of satisfied that he's the one feeling embarrassed right now. I just, I like, otters have cute tails, that's all. I snort. Yeah, I can see by the way you drew mine there. S sorry. Don't be. So yeah, I'm testing the waters here. It's been a while since I've played this game with a guy, and who the fuck thought the next one would be TJ, but here I am. I keep looking over at TJ, waiting for him to look up. Finally, he does look up at me for a moment, and we lock eyes. I smirk, and he smiles in return before looking back down. Well, that's something. <laughs> I sit on a big rock next to the shore, watching the tiny waves lap at the smaller rocks. Across the lake, maybe half a mile away, I see my friends, all of them, floating on something. It's my car. They're all in my car. Leo's driving. He's got sunglasses on. Even from this distance, I see him look across the lake at me. He waves and makes a finger gun, shoots it at me, making a clicking sound with his tongue. Flynn sits next to him, head back, sleeping. Carl's drawing, Carl's drawing on his face. Jenna sits in the back and reads in TJ? Where's TJ? God, I need more of these little drops, these throat drops. There he is. He's swimming after the car. Colors fall flat. I feel sticky and sick. Something isn't right. I'm at the canyon again. I'm looking over the edge. TJ's on the ground. He's staring at me. Maggots in his eyes. Something moves in the bushes next to him. Something... A paw? Is that a paw? It reaches out towards TJ. The lake. I'm staring at the lake, but the day is clear. The sky is blue and there are things in the water. Five, six things float in the water. Bodies. Bodies float in the water. I watch the bodies float, bobbing up and down. One looks really familiar. This isn't right. This isn't me. What is this? Something's across the lake. I see something across the lake. There's a tool shed. A tool shed is across the lake, and I see the door open. There isn't a tool shed next to the lake. Something steps out. Yeesh. Hmm. All y'all have your little secrets, don't you? Apparently no one can get in touch with him. Jenna leans back against the dresser, running a brush through her fur, the fur on her neck and head. So a little damp from the shower. Did they try his landline? Maybe he just muted his phone. He sleeps in like every day. Jenna shrugs. I'm gonna assume that they have. So no one told him he was gonna have a party? Jenna turns around and leans towards the mirror above the dresser, brushing away loose fur. It's a surprise party, right? I guess. It's just that it's not really his birthday. Jenna sighs. It's just an excuse to do something in the shitty town. I see Jenna glance at the door to the bathroom, as if worried TJ can hear her curse, even with the shower running. I let out my sigh. Well, I'm sorry I dragged you here, Jenna. I thought it would be fun is all. Jenna finishes whatever she's doing in the mirror and turns back around to face me. Hey, it's not the town I came to see. It was you guys. Yeah, well, you don't seem very happy about that either. Jenna frowns. If I didn't want to be around you guys, I'd have left by now. I have friends in Peyton that could take me to the bus stop. I don't say anything. I usually lean back on the bed and close my eyes. Still tired from the fucked up dreams I had last night. Sorry, I'll stop complaining. I massage my forehead with one hand. It's still the beginning of the week. We've got time to turn this around. It's really just Flynn. I look over at her. Is he coming? Yep. Leo said he had a talk with him, so... I mean, Flynn gets over stuff pretty quick. I think it won't be awkward if we don't let it be. Jenna looks at the shower door, the sound of the dryer blowing loudly behind it. It's not really Flynn that I'm worried about. The things he said to TJ... I rub my eyes. If it gets to that point, me and TJ will just cut out early and go somewhere else. Maybe Janice's place. Open my eyes to look at Jenna. You going with us? Jenna smirks at me. I think I have some studying to do. Oh, come on! 
Anyway, what if Flynn has another... She immediately cuts herself off as the door suddenly cracks open. I see one of TJ's blue eyes looking through the opening. The eyes widen and the door quickly closes again. Suddenly it swings back open and Lynx comes striding out in just his pants. Excuse me, Jenna. Jenna moves over and TJ reaches into one of the drawers to pull out a polo shirt. Forgot my shirt. <laughs> he mumbles before turning back around and hurrying to the bathroom. I catch a glimpse of the insides of his ears, which are bright red. The door snaps shut again. We both stare at the door a while before Jenna speaks up again. If Lynn can keep his mouth shut until the end of the week, then we just might be able to get through this. I stare out the window as we roll down the dusty streets of Echo. Honestly, it doesn't look much worse off than how I left it. The roads might be a little worse, but I assume that's because they haven't done any maintenance since winter. I'm regretting not letting you know we're coming. You know? Well, letting him know we're coming, you know? Well, you'll be lucky if he even gets his ass out of bed. We'll call him, then. I think I'm gonna do more of, like, a southern deep accent for Flynn. I think it would match him better. And what if he doesn't answer? Leo doesn't say anything, instead focusing back on the road. TJ fills the silence after a while. Well, I don't think it's too weird. It's just like we're hanging out again. Nothing wrong with that. Sure, but making it about Carl is just weird. Maybe if his birthday was, like, next week. Two weeks tops. Oh, hush, Flynn. It'll be just like we're hanging out. You acting weird about it isn't going to help anything. The car starts slowing down, and I snap out of my daydreaming to look up, knowing that we definitely aren't at Carl's house yet. I just want to see a round canine figure standing further up the side of the road. She's standing in the dirt that separates the road and the field in front of a broken and rusted barbed wire fence. I think that's Janice. I look over at Leo, and he seems concerned. His brows furrowed as he carefully she she steers the car right up next to the coyote. I can see why. She's crouched over, elbows on her knees, staring at the ground. Well, down your window, Chase. I do as he says, struggling a little with the old crank handle. <clears throat> the hell is she doing out here? We come to a stop next to the coyote, kicking up some dust. I don't know. Hey! Leo leans over me and smiles out at Janice, who's still looking at the ground. Everything all... Leo's voice cuts off in a weird choking sound. I look at him, confused, and look back out the window, and I can't help myself, but, ga but I gasp. It was hard to tell from the angle and all the dust kicked up by the sun, but now I can see that Janice has her pants down around her thighs. I can also see everything else. I sit back quickly and avert my eyes, looking out the windshield instead. What the fuck? Oh my god, Leo, keep going! Jenna whispers it, her voice strained. Oh, uh, sorry, uh... Leo stops talking and I, and I chance a glance out the window again. Janice is looking at us now, and she's smiling. It's a weird smile because it isn't touching her eyes. It's unnerving. Leo stares back. Leo, go! It's out the side of my mouth. Staring out the windshield again. He seems reluctant. He seems reluctant too, though, looking concerned. Alright, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye!